It is eight o'clock. We've got our coffees. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chamber AM, your morning connection. I heard through the grapevine next month is probably going to be in person. Oh, I'm just oh, saying yeah. we're getting our ducks in a row. So keep out for April. Uh, it's going to be coming in hot. Uh, there's quite a few things kind of coming down the pipeline this month, uh, but but the transition to in-person is going to happen in, in April. So we are looking forward. It is feeling positive. It's good to see all of you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Coming off of 1.4 million TikTok views last week. Lisa Coacher, Coacher Candy, being kind is sweet. Welcome, my friend, and over to you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I was so happy to see Phil and Rob and just people that I've actually met through this process. So thanks for coming on everybody to listen to me speak. And on International Women's Day, Tiffany sent me a frantic email <laughs> to see if I would come on. And I immediately like Ashley wanted to puke because even though I love to talk and share my story, um, I think it's just nice to challenge ourselves. So thanks for asking me. Um, so my name's Lisa. I'm the owner of Couture Candy. I have some notes here, which is weird because it's my story and I should know it. Um, but I just really want my story to be um, a story of hope and positivity for everybody because I had who, what I call kind of bright lights um, in my life helped me transition through this journey. So to be a bright light in somebody else's world, this is what this whole kind of little business is. Um, so the life that I have now is nothing like the life that I had before in the little snippet um, introducing me, Tiffany had written that I was an addictions counselor for almost 14 years. Um, and helping profession is really, really tough, especially where I work. I worked in a detox setting um, for that amount of time. And during that time, I think everybody who gets into helping professions really, really, really wants to help people. And I just learned really far into my career where I thought there was no turning back that I was questioning whether I was actually helping anybody. So I'm going to kind of go forward and then come back. But when I was really, really struggling with debilitating anxiety from being the, from being an addictions counselor, um, there's a lot that goes into that, that really attributed to my anxiety. One is compassion fatigue. Um, and the other one is vicarious trauma. The stories that we heard that I heard for over a decade even though you're not seeing them or dealing with them really hands-on like a first responder might or somebody else in the helping profession. Um, it's stories that I realized that I was carrying with me for all of that time that floods into your personal life, all of your friendships, all of your relationships. So it's a really, really, really hard thing to do. Um, it got to the point where I was driving to work in a one hour commute because I worked in Oshawa. Um, every day just crying my eyes out all the way through the 115. It was a really, really hard time in my life. Um, I kind of randomly found this group of women um, actually at Full Tilt Cycle. <laughs> I was just trying to find anything as an outlet to either create happiness or get rid of this anxiety. I didn't really know what. And somebody there asked me this question, and it's really the theme of what I wanted to talk about today, because I had never heard it, anything presented to me this way before, but it really made me ponder what I wanted in life, what I didn't want in life anymore, um, and ultimately what I could handle in my life having this mental health concern that I was having. Um, and the question is, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? I think so many of us, and I can see this now, you know, just by thinking, you know, what my life used to be like, um, but we get so caught up in the day to day, the grind, we're strapped to golden handcuffs, um, you know, especially for me, I was highest seniority, full time government pension, 
um, at a top rated hospital in the province. You know, most people dream of having that job and here I was kind of trying to get rid of it. So that question, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail really just stuck with me because it was never entrepreneur, let me tell you that. It was never, you know, a woman in small business, but it was change and it was kindness and it was positivity. The environment I worked in was so toxic and so negative. And as new addictions and new drugs became more and more severe, mental health that we were dealing with became more and more severe. So there was a lot of traumatic events that were happening. There was um, overdoses happening in our um, workspace. So it was a really, really tough place to work. So I was having trouble kind of finding my way back to the Lisa who wanted to help people. Um, we were just uh, to totally unable to thrive in that environment. So I was desperately trying to find some sort of happiness. Um, it was never in the cards for me to change ever. I had a family and a husband who was a first responder. You know, we were living the, you know, a way that we were kind of always grown up to live. But I also knew that I couldn't help anyone anymore. <laughs> and I had to really realize that that's not a selfish thing. Um, even though I had thought, you know, I'm a very helping person. I'm definitely an empath. Um, I knew that I had nothing else to give. In a lot of helping professions, you do see a lot of growth and a lot of change in people. But in the environment that I worked, we saw the same people with the same stories, no growth for almost 15 years. So it's very hard, you know, and it's a systemic issue, but that's a, a bigger, a bigger thing for me. But um, I just knew I couldn't help anybody, but I knew that I had to have some change to help myself. So in June 2019, I experienced a second very traumatic event um, at my job. This was only about three months after experiencing a very traumatic event before that. So I was really struggling with going back there, like really, really badly. It wasn't safe for me to be there. It wasn't safe for me to be doing my role as an addictions counselor with people who are also struggling. Um, I definitely wasn't ready to be helping people. That was the day I left and I never went back. <laughs> so there was a couple of things kind of leading up to that, but what I now know as the scariest thing, the most traumatic thing that has ever happened to me in my whole life um, was really truly one of the best blessings that I've ever been given. The day that I left um, was two days before we were going on a family vacation with our very best friends um, out East. Remember when we could travel <laughs> pre-COVID? <laughs> Um, so this had been planned for a year and we left and I felt like such a burden to my family and our best friend. We were looking forward to this so much, but I'd had this huge traumatic thing happen and it really got me thinking of how this time had to be a gift. I had no distractions. I was with the people who I love the most and who love me the most. And we really just had time to break it down over two weeks, what possibly I could do, what I liked doing, which I didn't know. I didn't like anything. But the saddest thing for me was I really didn't have any self-worth left at this time. No self-confidence that my skills as a helping professional, as an addictions counselor could transfer to anything else. I just couldn't see how I possibly couldn't do anything but some kind of social work or helping profession. Um, so the gift of time was amazing. I was able to bounce every single scenario I had come up in my brain about how it would be impossible for me to leave, like I said, my high seniority pension government hospital job. But the motivating factor was I knew that I couldn't go back. This toxicity, the negativity, the environment just wasn't going to be good for me anymore. And I cried.
cried a lot <laughs> on this trip. I could not see the good or any positivity in the world. Nothing. Everything was, when you hear those kinds of stories and see those kinds of things happening in the world, it's very hard to see that there's any good left. Um, but in hindsight, it was the best vacation we've ever taken. Um, it just totally changed my life. So I took the leap um, the day that we got home from my trip. Um, so in July of 2019, I sent my resignation letter by email, basically just saying I wouldn't be back. My two weeks notice would be paid vacation. Um, and my supervisor was very, very um, supportive which was weird because that wasn't the norm. <laughs> um, and I just thought, well, I guess I better start looking for another addictions counseling job, you know, whether that was going to be in Peterborough or, you know, somewhere else. Um, but I had this kind of gut wrenching feeling that that was never going to work for me. And after I closed the laptop, after sending my resignation letter, I cried and cried and you'll get to know me that I cry a lot. Um, but yeah, but I cried and cried and cried while everybody else around me was celebrating. My parents, Matt had, my husband, Matt had texted my parents. They came right over and everybody was celebrating. And here I am crying and crying and crying. Um, but all through this time, I was always watching small business women in Peterborough absolutely crush it from a distance, from a scary, quiet distance. I never wanted to be a small business owner. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I never thought I could be a small business owner. One, because I knew nothing in business and I just didn't have the mind power or the confidence to believe that I could be anything other than what I was. So I remember on the trip um, to the East Coast that I had seen some small business owners who were selling their business. And I remember kind of putting it out there to my husband and our best friends being like, well, I don't know, maybe something like that, but then automatically cast it to the side and just like start talking about maybe just taking the safe route. Um, but the idea kind of always stayed there and festered and festered and festered. So six months passed by and I was mom of the year. Whatever the kids wanted to do, we did it. Candy in their lunches, you know, saying yes to everything because I was now a stay at home mom. I wasn't working 12 hour days, 14 hours with a commute. You know, I had this time to really, really put my focus into them. So every day I got to work on myself, my confidence started to grow. And this little idea of this <laughs> little candy gram, sending it through the mail was just this idea that I grabbed onto that I really, really thought that I could do something special with. And for whatever reason, it reminded me of the nice things, the kind things, the surprising things that I used to do for people before my self-confidence and self-worth started to come down over the years of struggling with anxiety. So I was struggling so much with my own craving of positivity and kindness but this idea that I could really do something special with this and someone could take this little tiny thing and send it in a surprise through the mail when we never get anything good in the mail anymore, except bills. Um, I decided that that's something that I should really ride with. Um, imagine saying that to your parents who have been blue collar factory workers <laughs> for your whole life. I've left my government pension job to put candy in a little bag. Um, but everybody was very supportive, but there was a lot of like, you're doing what? What is it? Why are people sending it? And I didn't even have the answers um, for any of those questions, but we started to do it. I started to tell some people that I felt really comfortable with um, who started helping me with my brand, who started helping me build an Instagram account. 
um, and just very slowly put it out into the world. We made a name, you know, I was still very unsure. And just like Ashley said, um, you know, almost puked when I put it out into the world. Um, I also didn't know who would be happy for me. That was another thing, because even though all of this time passed, I just really believed that the world was still a terrible place. So it was very, very hard, even though it was something very exciting. Um, we did the being kind of sweet, which was something that my friend came up with. And I remember I got my first DM order where someone just wanted to send this in the mail. And I had absolutely no idea what to do. <laughs> my mom was here and I said, well, what do I do now? And she goes, well, send it in the mail. So we packaged everything up and it was a small success at lightning speed. Grandparents were sending these to their grandbabies who they didn't live in the same city as. Um, we were getting asked to do loot bags. And a little full circle story is my very first customer was Shelby Watt at SOS. So now to have my store beside her and she's just such a bright light in my life and such a big supporter of mine. It's a really beautiful kind of full circle story within my story. Um, and this was also pre candy candy is very much kind of a thing now um, with social media, but this was pre candy pre candy boxes pre candy grams pre TikTok. Um, and people just really latched on to not only the sweet, cute packaging, but also this idea that it was all powered behind sending some kindness and sending some positivity to someone. So people all over Peterborough were really gravitating to these sweet little bags. They were customizing them. They were sending them all over the place. I would be frantically searching for the things that people wanted because I, I just had to make it happen. And my plan was working. It was very strange that it was working. Um, working my tail off really helped me boost my confidence, really, really fight my anxiety daily. Even though I was an addictions counselor, I never really sought professional. I see so many heads going. I never sought like professional help for myself because I, I don't know why, unless I had, when I experienced those traumas and there was this high traumatic event, I would get some support, but never kind of on a regular, which now I know I probably should have. Um, and my kids were so proud of me. They were just so delighted. And I mean, how could the kids not love when their mom owns a candy shop and we had a big room full of candy. It was just fantastic. Um, so the next kind of big pivot in my business was somebody sending me a DM in Instagram, because that's how we did everything. We didn't have a website and said, could you do like more and then like put it in a box? Like, is that a thing? And I was just like, I can make that a thing. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that and see how that works. So I started doing themed boxes in the second bedroom that we outgrew in our house. We were setting them all over Canada. My poor husband on his days off, I'd have him driving around Peterborough and Peterborough County for hours delivering these boxes. Um, Christmas time came and again, just at lightning speed, everything just kept taking off and I was feeling better. Um, then my husband built me an office where I am now, a little small warehouse space. We added new products. The candy grams were finally um, you know, or not finally, they were still taking off. And then March 2020 happened. So we were set up um, to do a local market in town for Easter. So we had hundreds of candy grams and hundreds of Easter boxes and, you know, all these things set up and the world just completely shut down. Um, and we were devastated. I was devastated. I wanted to get out into Peterborough and meet people and see people and instead of doing it all over direct message on Instagram. I really wanted it to be this in-person connection because that was so important to me. Um, we ended up donating hundreds and hundreds of um, Easter candy grams to first responders, to police officers, 
to just nurses to ICU unit at the hospital. Um, we just knew that, you know, we had to do something. Um, but it actually worked out really good for us <laughs> in the end. Um, people were terrified to go anywhere. Um, you know, Walmart and stuff was open, but Easter was fast approaching and people were more than grateful, more than happy to roll up to my driveway and pick up Easter treats for their families, make the kids Easter really special because we have to remember, you know, we're living with this pandemic now with COVID now, but initially it was something that was really, really scary. So being a positive piece of it for a lot of people in Peterborough was just so, so awesome for us. Um, so my movement of kindness just grew and grew through the pandemic. People started doing porch drop-offs, which became a total normal thing with our product. We were doing um, like these positive ninja things, like where people would send an anonymous candy gram to someone and I was writing hundreds of notes to say you've been injured and we would drop them off and you know it was just such a positive bright thing for us in the pandemic. Um, so we would get messages a lot and we still do all the time about a new mom who got our new mama box um, at a time where she was really struggling with postpartum depression after having her baby and this was the one thing that got her through the day. Um, you know, just positive stuff because you get this little box of candy and you just have no idea what's in it. And, um, you know, we're just so grateful for all of that stuff. So candy was never the goal, obviously, but it, it's still the motivation behind it is just to stay positive, be kind to people. Um, and it all really comes full circle. It has for me anyway. Um, so we've created a platform now from the story from, you know, no self-worth, no confidence, no positivity in the world, can't see anything positive to really helping big corporations, small business, schools, unions, associations, hospital staff really have a small, sweet, affordable way to do an act of kindness, whether it's random or whether it's planned. Um, and we see it growing and growing all the time. It's been an absolute dream come true for me. Um, and really quite an interesting story. That one question that somebody asked me, and it's why I'll never forget it, um, is what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? It was definitely, you know, quit my job, but there was nothing else you know, that went with it. I was having trouble kind of finishing that phrase or linking it to something else. Um, so I think it's a really important question when we get caught up in life to really just slow down and think about, am I happy? Is there something else that I can do? What am I struggling with? And I, I'm well aware that not everybody, you know, can leave their well-paying government job without a lot of factors being lined up. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, but I know that it's working now and I know that I'm not done. Um, you know, I don't struggle the way that I used to. I mean, I think, you know, having anxiety about, you know, talking in front of 20 people is one thing. Um, but I don't struggle the way that I did. And I see the love and the kindness and the positivity that's in the world now. So that switch in my brain has been turned on and it's something I'll, I can never take for granted ever. Um, so we went viral on TikTok this week. We had over 100,000 people visit our website in a three-day period, um, which is absolutely wild. So our movement is even bigger now. Um, it's a lot more, obviously, than just, you know, putting candy in a box. But we see the love coming through um, in likes and shares and comments and orders and you know, all of that stuff, but it's um, really sharing the story of how it came to be um, is really the most important part for us. There's opportunities coming down the pike. Um, Nigel and Tiffany were chatting um, together a little bit about that, that I'm really excited to share in the next little bit. But the fact that people want to even know me or listen to my voice, um, that was the running joke was that, um, 1.4 million people heard this voice. Um, but 
it's just been absolutely incredible. And I can't wait to share the big opportunities that are coming. Um, but that question again, just to kind of wrap up, I see so many nice comments coming through the chat. Um, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Is it to write a book? Is it to take a trip? Is it just to make it one more week through this pandemic? Is it to change your life? Is it to be brave in one single instance? I really like to believe that that's what I did. Um, I was made to feel like I would always fail at my old job. Our management always told us that. It always felt that way when we didn't see positivity and change from our clients. It always felt like we were failing. And now I know that was just the environment I was in. I now know that that wasn't me and that wasn't the energy that I was putting out into the world. Um, but my answer now to the question is just find kindness and be kind to people. You, it's fail proof. There is nothing negative that can come from that. So for me, it was to find the people who have the same goals as me, um, who love me and who I love um, and who want to see you do well and who will congratulate you when you do. I think it's a fail-proof system. And if you really think about it, it's probably what everybody is looking for. Um, so anyway, that's kind of it. I just love that I could be maybe a bright light in somebody's if anybody could be like, oh, this story that I heard, you know, it's really special to me. And um, I just appreciate everybody so much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. You you sort of like made a self-deprecating joke there about your own <laughs> voice. And honestly, I'm just going to call you right out and get in front of it. I just watched you speak like you were an Oscar nominated. Oh, you're movie. hilarious. I am not kidding. I, you totally had <laughs> me do get over the whole sound of your voice thing because you have a lovely voice and I, I actually love listening to you speak. So oh, thank you. That story was so powerful. There were many, many things kind of woven in, in that, in that tapestry. And I'm just sort of blown away. So first and foremost, Lisa Kocher, Kocher Candy PTBL. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you for being inspiring. Thank you for sharing things that you may have just kept inside. We, we appreciate it. And, and you've definitely fired us all up this morning. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to Nigel. Nigel is going to run through Q&A and get you caught up with your chamber news. I have to jump out with Nicole Cook because we got a tour on over to Fresh. Uh, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. Lisa, you blew me away. Oh, thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone. Nigel, over you. to you. Buddy. Perfect. Yeah, Lisa, thank you so much. That was inspirational for I think, probably all of us. Um, it was excellent to hear and um yeah it's 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 amazing how you ended up going into candy like it's not a typical uh business but i think everyone dreams about it at one point in their life so you've made the dreams of so many children a reality there by getting into candy so um yeah that's what stuck out when Stu made a comment about the quote that you made about it i didn't it didn't always or i forget what it was but i didn't always dream of candy and i was thinking i've always dreamt of candy <laughs> so i don't know what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> nigel but, do you mind if i just jump in because absolutely. i'm 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 blown away like never before and honestly lisa in my 20 years with the chamber i've oh. never seen a reaction like this morning the oh, comments i hope you take the time to read the comments because you are incredible and the oh, quotes so oh my much. gosh the quotes like there's just <laughs> so many things that you said that were just so powerful so i think it's so just, important for women to be vulnerable because i know i certainly know there's no way that i was the only person who was struggling especially uh, there's other helping professionals in the group and in our town so it just it just starts with being honest that's all yep just be your awesome self thank you so much thank sorry you, back guys. to you nigel no, it's uh, time for if we well, we have a couple minutes for some questions. So if anyone has anything they want to ask Lisa, um, feel free to jump in. I can't see everybody. So if I don't call you out and no one's talking, just go ahead. Uh, I have a, a serious question. Um, that, that was a great uh, presentation, Lisa. And it's always nice to come in and see at the shop. My serious question is, um, do you have any nerds? Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> 
<laughs> candy corn left because uh, I, we're fresh out. <laughs> you know what? I don't, but it's coming. And when it comes, I'll save you a bag. Perfect. I love when Phil comes to my shop because him and Doug and just everybody in his family, they are bright lights in my life who I've only met through this candy business. So I'm really appreciative of you. Thanks. That's Lisa. awesome. Uh, Thanks. Cora, I saw your hand go up. I just have a question on this TikTok thing because I'm like you or were and I'm there now. I'm scared like crazy of that TikTok thing. And yeah. I haven't got a clue where to start or even whether I should or want to. I, you got anything in a couple of sentences? I don't know if anybody else is a little afraid of the whole TikTok thing. Yeah, no, I was terrified of it um, only because I thought it was it had to be this flashy with trending sounds and transitions and all of this stuff. But when I really realized it's just like Instagram and exactly what I was doing on my Instagram reels, um, I would just do it in Instagram and then I would do the same thing. Um, and once I was in there, I learned kind of more tips and tricks. But honestly, when I just started having fun with it and just doing what I wanted to do and not what other people were doing is when I went viral. So and I think probably it's said the most stuff. powerful thing, having yeah. fun with it instead yeah. of being scared of it, which is where I'm at a little bit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Have fun with it. It's, it is a really fun place to be. Awesome. Was there anyone else had any last questions? I don't see any hands up. All right, then I'll just run through some chamber news. Um, again, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for coming on. And it's so fitting with International Women's Day. Um, so I'll just run through some things here. So social media, uh, first of all, follow Couture Candy on social. Uh, and then also you can check for the chamber as well. We have lots of different things coming out in the future here. Uh, sponsorship opportunities. We are looking for different sponsorships. Uh, coming up, lots of opportunities for you to get involved, especially with Business Excellence, Chamber AM, uh, PBX, Power Hours. So just email Tiffany if you want any interest in that. Uh, COVID-19 portal, we're keeping that updated. Uh, hopefully that becomes a thing of the past soon. But for now, we still have important updates going up there regularly. Uh, so check that out. 26 Coffees, if you missed the registration, we have a waiting list. And we'll launch another group if we get just eight more people. Uh, so email Matthew or myself and we'll get you set up for that. Uh, chamber members, did you know you can offer an exclusive chamber discount? Uh, just like Esso saves chamber members 3.5 cents per liter on gas and how Walton Wood Farm has exclusive shopping discounts. Uh, just check out on Peterbilt Chamber these different discounts. And if you want to get involved offering these, uh, reach out as well. Uh, our boss event is coming up March 23rd at 12 p.m. That's business owners sharing solutions, uh, taking return to office and the advantages in the new world of work. A uh, couple save the dates. We have our Kawartha Chamber AGM, which is March 23rd, uh, 5 p.m., which will feature Rhonda and Joe from PCAD. Uh, Peterborough AGM is March 30th at 12 p.m. So don't mix those up. So the 23rd is Kawartha at 5, Peterborough at the 30th at 12. And those pillows will get sent out in post as well. Uh, Love Local, uh, we have sponsorships for the Love Local Kawarthas going out. Final calls for that. So reach out to Tiffany if you're interested. And finally, our power hour is March 16th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, so you can register on our website and get involved in that. That is something that's going to be set up. Joel's setting that up, and it's very much a panel to hear from our different politicians at different levels. And basically, the power. Hear about people in power. So it's uh, very informative, and we look forward to that. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, another shout out once again, Lisa. Thank you so much. 